In the polynomial p of x defined above, k is a constant. If p of x is divisible by x, what is the value of k? We have to go back in time a little bit to when you first learned about divisibility and factors to get an idea of what this question is saying, and then we'll go back to the algebra and see, actually, it's a pretty straightforward solution once you understand the, the concepts here. So what does it mean if something is divisible by another number? Think back to when you first learned this. So if we said, we took the number 10, and we asked, what is one number that's divisible into 10? You might say 2. And how do we know that? Well, first you could say, well, 10 divided by 2 gives you 5, and there's no remainder. And indeed, that is an example of how 2 is divisible, right, into 10. 10 divided by 2 gives you a whole number, no remainder. But what's actually going on here? You can remember that 10 is really just the product of itself, the factors 5 and 2. So that when you divide 5 times 2 times 2, these factors of 2 cancel, leaving you with 5. Right? That's how factors and divisibility work. Any number can be broken up into its prime factors. And if you divide that number by the requisite number of prime factors, you're going to get something that's divisible. Take, on the other hand, if we're doing uh, 10 divided by 4. Well, that's just going to be 5 times 2 divided by 2 times 2. So indeed, one of the 2's cancel. But of course, what we're left with is two factors that can't divide into one another. So here we get 2.5, or you could see this as 2 remainder 1. The point is, is it doesn't go in equally. So you wouldn't say that 4 is divisible, 10 is divisible by 4, for example. So that's the idea of divisibility. So we're going to take this factor right here, this, this polynomial, 3 times x squared plus 10x plus 5 minus 5 times x minus k. And we want it to be divisible by x. That means we're going to take this whole thing, we're going to divide it by x, and at the end, we're going to want to get no remainders, no crazy fractions. We want this x, if you think about it, as a factor to divide into all of the terms. So we want this x to divide into all these terms. And to take a step back, imagine if we had something like, I don't know, 36 plus 50. And uh, let's do 36 plus uh, 44. And let's say we're dividing that by 4. Notice we could add this up and we would get 80 divided by 4, which is 20. Or we could, again, break this up into its factors. This would be 3 times 3 times 4. And this would be 4 times 11. And now in order for 4 to be divisible into the sum, the 4 has to go into each of these factors. So notice there's a 4 in each of the terms up top. So that 4 has got to cancel each of those factors. And what we're left with then is 9 plus 11, which is 20, which is what we got when we did 80 divided by 4. So the principle here is if you're dividing into a sum, each of the terms of the sum have to have that factor in it in order for it divide, to divide equally. So if we look at this, let's first factor this out. So we get 3, or FOIL it, distribute it, 3x squared plus 30x plus 15 minus 5x plus 5k divided by x. So what we want to happen is we want this x, in order for this top to be divisible by the bottom, this x has to divide into each of these terms. Notice it already divides into this term, this term, and this term, because they all have x's. But x is never going to divide into 15, because notice there's no x term above for it to cancel. Nor is it going to divide into this 5k term, because again, there's no x for it to cancel. But if we could get rid of the 15 and the 5k, if we were just left with these three terms, we'd be good to go. And there's the trick. So we can make k equal to negative 3. And if that were the case, this becomes negative 15. And now suddenly, 15 plus negative 15 cancels. So let's set this up. We have 3x squared plus 30x plus 15 minus 5x. And again, imagine k is negative 3. So this becomes negative 15. Now, 15 minus 15 cancel. So we're just left with 3x squared plus, oops, 3x squared plus, pen is going nuts, 3x squared plus 30x minus 5x all over x. And now this x divides into each of these terms. It cancels an x here, cancels an x here, cancels an x here. So what we'd be left with is 3x plus 30 
minus 5, which ultimately is some number. But the point is, it's divisible. Each of these x's goes in equally. We're good to go. So that means k is going to have to be negative 3, which means our answer here is a, such that this constant term, this term without the x cancels, and we're just left with terms with an x, so that x can divide into each of them equally. So this one is choice A. To learn more about Reason Prep's SAT, SAT subject test, and ACT video courses, go to reasonprep.com enroll, and you can find the link in the description below the video.